How much money did Mono make this summer? We'll talk about that in this vlog along with the Vault Haven Pole Vault Camp. Welcome to the Pole Vault Vlog. We talk everything Pole Vault. <laughs> Nailed it. That's Kaylin. Everyone say hi to Kaylin. Let's see if I have a good commercial joke for you guys today. Yo mama is so fat, she has an insert ad sign here on both sides of her butt cheeks. Commercial time, commercial time. Everybody loves commercial time. If you'd like to be a member of Team Hoot, it's free. Just head over to team-hoot.com, sign up, and bam, we get to share this team together. Team Hoot. Very soon I'm gonna put out a video talking about the future of this vlog here. This is all the vlog, but there's still some time to save it. The United States Pole Vault Association or USPVA contacted me and said, hey, we see the value in these vlogs. We want to help save it. So from now until August 8th, for every person who signs up for Patreon, USPVA is going to double it. So if you've been sitting on the sidelines waiting to sign up, now's the time to do it. Oh, Tay, here's the plan for the rest of this vlog. We'll talk about the Moberly Camp. We'll talk about how much money Mono made this summer and we'll do some pole vault reviews. I met Dr. Brad Fredell at the Reno Pole Vault Summit back in January. I heard you want to be in the vlog. No, I... <laughs> and he stopped me and he goes, Sean, how do we get you to Vault Haven? And I said, dude, you just have to invite me. Six months later, I arrived in Mobile, Missouri at Vault Haven. Fingers right outside the window. That's the pole vault pit right there and the runway goes right across. Goes to 90 feet right now. That's where the extra 120 are coming from over there. They have a Ninja Warriors course. Big fan of you, big fan. And this is the room I'm staying in. And I said I'd sleep on the couch, but he gave me up his whole room. Here, look out this window. There's pole vault pit again. Gave me an Xbox, a TV, a bunch of games. Check this out. Look at all these names. There's Mondo. Oh, I signed it too. There's me. Shortly after, I had the privilege of meeting a young pole vaulter by the name of Kalen. First thing you told me when you got here was that I jumped over a standing polar bear. If you jump 10 feet, you can jump over a standing polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Kaylin are like best friends now. Just saying. Now the only way I can describe Kaylin is if the movie The Sandlot, instead of being about baseball, was about pole vault. Kaylin would be Benny the Jet Rodriguez. The only other person I met who's been into pole vault this much at this young of an age is Mondo. That's the level Kaylin's at. The favorite, I think my favorite part is like... Of the pole vault? Yeah, of the okay. pole vault. The most satisfying, I think, is when they plant the box. I love the sound of it. And then when you just see the pole reflect back into the horizontal, it was just satisfying. That's awesome, man. I've never heard it said that way before. I need a high five <laughs> for that one. You gotta do a backflip into the worm. Backflip into the worm. Yeah, if you do that, you get to spend the night. You got it. <laughs> yeah! They, oh, there it is. We had it for a minute. Okay, you can stay. You can yeah. stay. Now, as we jumped into Chase's awesome little Wrangler, and he took us around the tour of Morberly. Kaylin started quoting every single vlog I've ever made. I think I might have found my biggest fan ever. Like, right? He just reminded me that I made a video called Drive By Compliments <laughs> a while ago and I forgot all about it. And uh, he started doing it. Did you just tell him they look nice tonight? Yeah, I just told him that. Good work, man. So tell me about this other game I play with my friends sometimes. It's just high-fiving strangers. It brings good vibes to everybody because everybody likes to high-five. I challenged him to five. You're a master, man. He wants a high-five. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Got a high-five love today. How many did I miss? Uh, you only missed one. Only one? That kid. Yeah, I got you, man. You're in it, man. Sorry, it's a wide-angle lens. Yeah. <laughs> he was one shy. And as the car slowly backed up, he leaped out of the Wrangler, ran to the store, and high-fived this lady walking in and got his five. That was awesome. The camp went great. We had two sessions because we had a lot of kids, so we had to split it. A lot of them wanted to work on bottom arm stuff. 
you know, some people say keep their arms straight, some people say keep it bent. It doesn't really matter as long as you're creating elasticity. And they were nailing it. They were doing so good and I was so jacked for them. And I like to remind everybody, and I don't say this enough in the vlog, but I usually say at the camps, is that if we're taking a step back to take two forward, think of it like baking a cake. I'm giving you all the ingredients. You just put it in the oven, and now you just have to be a little bit patient and wait for it to be done. If you open up, it's too early. You're just gonna have mush. You don't want a mushy cake, guys. <laughs> so after the camp, we went down into the heart of Moberly, and uh, Chase showed me how he, how good he is at parallel parking. Keep going. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's the best I could do, guys. <laughs> Six hours later. If Mondo, if you're watching, hi. I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm gonna try to break your record, but probably not, but still. And if Sam, if you're watching, hi. Now the best thing you can do for pole vault, Nick and I, Nick is awesome, by the way. We taught everyone how to Indian leg wrestle. Oh, wait! Maybe I can't say that anymore. Is it called Native American leg wrestling now? We taught them how to do it. Whatever you want to call it. If you guys don't know what Indian leg wrestling, the goal is to whip your leg up, flip your opponent onto their face. Whoever flips over on their face loses. Fun game. That'll be the funniest thing ever. Now, the best matches were the brother and the sister mashup. We had Chase versus Bailey, and we had Kaylin versus Carly. Kaylin and Carly are twins, by the way. Now Nick and I were sitting back and we laughed our buttholes off. <laughs> I try not to say ass because some people don't like it when I say it. So I said butthole, which is worse than saying ass. Is it? <laughs> butthole. The ladies destroyed the boys. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Chase didn't seem too upset. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's, no, he's definitely mad. And Carly, Kaylin's twin sister, said, I've never beat him in anything athletic in my entire life. <laughs> Freaking out. It was awesome. It was fun to watch. But Kaylin is about as competitive as you can get. So he was like, we need one more. We need one more. I need one more. We need one more. And so they did one more. And he whipped out his secret weapon. One, two, three. <laughs> Did you fart on her face? We gotta look at the review. <laughs> You're gonna give her a pink eye. <laughs> Didn't even see it coming. The next day started bright and early at 8 o'clock in the morning. We just ate champion sophomore on day one. She's like, I just want to fix my bottom and it just keeps smashing me in the face. And we saw glimpses of it. We saw it hit really well a few times and it was gonna go. I'll be honest, I'm not a good enough coach to fix that in two sessions. If I had an extra four or five sessions, I think, bam, we could we could have fixed the bottom arm. And during this time, she just kept trying and trying and trying and hammering and hammering and hammering. After that, I was just like, you, you know what? It's gonna come. I just want to see your jump. I haven't seen state champion jump, jump yet. I, all I've seen is you trying to work on bottom arm version of you. So after I saw the frustration, we just stopped working on the bottom arm all together and I just let her jump. Sometimes you just need that. Now Mark Twain has this quote, it's one of my favorite quotes, that if, if you're not having fun, you might as well be dead. Bottom arm will come, but it was making the vault not very fun, so your cake will come. Thanks for letting me hang out with you guys and trying my crazy ideas. Now, there was some kind of magic at this Vault Haven place that Brad has created, and I don't know how to describe it. So I'm just gonna tell you a story quick. When Brad's son Chase picked me up from the airport, one of the first things he said to me was, I'm not sure if you know this or my dad's told you, but he was a physician and he got into an accident that made him retire from being a physician. It's not a huge deal, I just want you to be aware of it in case something comes up. When I got to his house and Brad went to go get a water, his daughters came up and said, I just want you to know, my dad got into an accident a few years ago and I, don't know if he told you, I just want you to be aware of it while, while you're here. And then while I was working on the raised runway with Brad, well, we weren't really working on it, we were just talking pole vault the whole time, but it came up a few times too, and he told me about what happened. And every time it came up, it just kept hitting home that this was one of those massive points in their life that changed everything, and that his kids were coming up and like, looking out for their old man. They were looking out for Brad. And I understood that it was this massive turning point in their lives, and I knew there was no way I could comprehend the enormity of what happened. On the last morning, I was down the stairs eating breakfast by myself, uh, and Mrs. Dr. Friedel was heading out to work. She's like, Sean, I, I, I'm jacked I get to see you this morning. And she came up to me and she goes, I'm not sure if Brad told you, but Brad was in a really bad accident and it, it completely changed our way of life. Now, as I'm hearing this, 
um, that empathetic feeling started coming back like, oh man, every member of the family has told me the same thing. I could just feel it. She just looked back and goes, it was the best thing that ever happened to our family. And she smiled even bigger. Then she looked outside and she's like, look at what Brad's been able to create. Look at all the lives he's touched. And he's gotten to spend a lot more time with the kids and impact their lives in positive ways. It was the best thing that has ever happened to our family. That's the kind of love Vault Haven came from. It was my best summer yet. Thanks to you guys. All right, let's get into it. That's sappy and weird and Sean's too emotional. Stop it. Let's talk about how much money Mondo made this summer. Flowtrack put out an amazing article talking about this and I will link it down in the description below. If you guys didn't know about it, I would like to push people towards them because they're awesome. They broke down all the meets he went to. Most of them were Diamond League meets. They marked his wins and the prize money that he could potentially won at those meets. It came out to around $83,000 for an 18 year old kid who just a few months ago was at a senior prom. Also keep in mind, this does not include appearance fees or a shoe contract with bonuses, because those bonuses are where all the money is in. So how much money did Mondo really make this summer? Zero dollars. Mondo made zero dollars. Not from pole vaulting at least, unless he worked at Dairy Queen someplace, but no, he didn't make any money. NC, AA rules state that you cannot make money doing your sport. He waived all of this money to compete for LSU. Props to him, man. He didn't go pro because he wants to go to college. That's pretty cool. Don't know a lot of people who would do that. So what do you think? Do you think Mono should have went pro and been able to collect all this money? Or do you think he should go compete in college? Let me know in the comments below of, of what you think and why. I'm curious to hear what you say. Guys, let's review some videos. All right, this video is of Noah. We only have one this week. Um, and he was saying he feels like the row is, is a big issue. And I kind of agree, but always remember that if you see what's going on, go a couple steps back. So if we look back at the row at the beginning here, we're kind of leaning back at take up a little bit, which makes it a little hard, which puts on that braking force. And then from there, since we're already half swung, like our knee comes up right away. So I was telling him if we think about leaning forward a little bit and swinging really hard, that'll keep the pole rolling the way you want it to versus if we're just moving the pole, you know? And I've talked about this a little bit about the pole has to go out to the side so you can go through it. And so he's, he said he's feeling the poles rowing late I just, I don't know if it's late, I think it's just not being able to happen for you, man. So, a little work on that swing and a little bit on that posture on the takeoff, and good things will happen. Told him some other things too, but I always start there. Start in the beginning of your chain links and then work your way up. All right. Yeah. Guys, I've gotten a couple questions about video reviews and if I will continue to do them, depending on what the vlog will do. And um, I'll update you in that next video. Um, as of right now, you can keep sending video reviews. I just, if you want to, go to team slash gear and I will review your video. Huge thank you to all the Patreon members for keeping this thing going. If you are in tier three or higher, part of the deal is, is that you get your name in the vlog. So these are all the people who have donated from tier three and higher. If you would like to be a part of that group, head over to patreon.com slash team hoot and sign up. Like I said, USPVA is matching any donation from here until the 7th, or is it the 8th? One of those, just get it in soon. <laughs> That'll keep the vlogs going. And I'll, I'll tell you kind of the plan soon, within the next few days or so, so you, you guys know what's going on. There are a lot of ways to pull out. Try it all, see what works best for you. Because there is no one way to do it. Life is meant to be experienced and curiosity will get you there. I will see you guys next week. I'll see you guys when I see you. <laughs> Kylie, I know you hurt your ankle. We wish you were here. We'll just have to come back next year if they like the camp, I suppose. <laughs> Hopefully. You're bringing your parents. I already do. <laughs> All right. Um, Wanna high five the lens? What, what size?